keeping the record straight and I imagine some of you are familiar with our attempt to help little Wawa, a six-year-old orphan in West Papua. Now the story began about a month ago when we were approached by Paul Raphael, an expert on Melanesian tribes who told us about Wawa's plight and asked for our assistance. It was a story so compelling that we all felt we had to help, but sadly we were prevented from doing so. And this is what happened. Our journey began in Bali with a simple proposition to save the life of a child. As Paul Raphael explained, six-year-old Wawa is suspected by his tribe of being a male witch and is to be killed and eaten. Is it truly the right thing to do? Has it been well considered? Is it in the interests of Wawa and is it responsible? I think best, Naomi, I give you Wawa's uncle's answer. If Wawa stays in your fufla, he almost certainly will be killed and eaten. But if he gets out to Jayapura, there's a good hope that he will have a long life. When journalist and author Paul Raphael was in the jungles of West Papua last April, Wawa's uncle begged him to take the child to nearby Jayapura, where Wawa would be cared for, educated, and most importantly, where he'd be safe. When his family, his uncle, comes to me and said, this boy is under threat of being killed and eaten eventually, please take him away from here to Jayapura. I felt I had to do it. And saving Wawa has now become a matter of urgency. Six weeks ago, another of his uncles was killed in the very village little Wawa had been moved to for his safety. Of course, removing a child from his home, even for his own safety and with his family's blessing, is not something we took lightly. But our guide Cornelius Cambron had already successfully repatriated a 12-year-old boy and a young man, both who'd been accused of being kakwas, just like little Wawa. They adjust very well. I mean, it's not easy at first because they have a totally foreign language, but eventually they, they adjust pretty well. Our next stop, West Papua, where the first thing we did was apply for the same permits the 60 Minutes crew used to fly from Jayapura to Yanaruma to start the two-day trek to Yafufla and Little Wawa. We later found out from the operations commander of the police that we were under surveillance from the moment we arrived, with police already in position at the airport and our hotel before we got off the plane. The next day, as we travelled to meet the police to discuss the permits, we were under surveillance the entire journey, and our guide Cornelius was becoming increasingly concerned about Wawa. And the family also is very, uh, in a situation of very fear, because uh, this little brother just killed like a uh, one month ago. Many times I saw many people that killed, and I brought Paul to see the bones, and every time we hope that someone can help them. Finally came the news we'd been dreading. Our permits had been declined, but even more disturbing were the Associated Press reports that we'd been arrested, when clearly we hadn't. The next day, police helped us book flights to leave the country, but the saddest part of all was being forced to leave Wawa behind. So if we are sent out of the country today, mm -hmm. will you still be able to use the money that we can raise to save Wawa? I will. I'll do. Now, a lot of people seem to have wanted to make this story about something it's not. I have been pilloried and endured considerable personal attacks over this story, and... I'm not going to deny it's been hurtful and stressful, but please, let's not lose sight of the real story here. It's a story of a six-year-old orphan who we were trying to help. We went in with the best of intentions, and I'd do it again in a heartbeat, because at the end of the day, this is about saving Wawa's life. We wanted to help him. We still do. And it won't stop here.